So no deal better than a bad deal. Former State Department official Kristen Whiten agrees with the speaker. Iran's former min foreign minister, rather, just now a moment ago, saying that negotiations will not be finished today. Uh, so I was hope maybe, Kristen, that maybe there will be no deal uh, because it seems like they've extracted every concession possible out of the out of America and the rest of the Western negotiators. Well, that's right. Well, it's, it's, it, there is going to be a deal, I think, or a framework. It's not actually a deal. It's sort of an agreement to agree, and it's unclear what the totality of this, and we're going to kick the IAEA to the curb. They're going to have to negotiate inspections without any of the leverage, which we've incidentally removed. And I do agree with the Speaker that no deal is better. I don't agree with the Speaker saying the choices are a nuclear standoff or a new deal. I think that's a terrible narrative to go with. In fact, there are lots of options to put the pressure back on Iran, either to try and get a better deal, or better yet, to put Iran on the defensive, not to accept this false choice of diplomacy or war, but actually to make Iran pay a price for violating the non-proliferation treaty in the first place. And to your point, Chris, and the idea that they've really been pounding the table on re immediate removal of sanctions, immediate removal of the U.N. arms embargo, suggests that these are things that if you tighten them maybe a little bit more, we might get to where we're trying to get to anyway. All right, Charles, it's staggering if you go back to where the Obama administration began negotiations. And actually, these talks date well into the Bush administration, too. What we were insisting on red lines, that no enrichment take place in Iran, that has gone away. That there be some confession that the Iranians come to Jesus and tell us about their, the full outlines of their nuclear program, which incidentally was a requirement of the, of the flawed deal with North Korea. That has gone by the wayside. The idea that sanctions related to terrorism and all the other bad things Iran does around the region. It has its tentacles in Syria, in Lebanon, in Yemen. It has two armies on Israel's borders. That sanctions related to that would remain, that's gone by the wayside. And also, there doesn't appear to be any consideration for the four Americans held hostage by this uh, regime, Pastor Abedini and others. So really, almost every red line we have given away, and there's not a lot to show in return. So having said that, you know, I always ask uh, experts, uh, once we sign a deal, it seems like it would be the official countdown to Iran getting a nuke. They always tell me that countdown's begun. So how far off could the speaker be? Maybe not immediately we're not talking nuclear uh, uh, showdown, but is it inevitable at where we're going right now? I think so. This enshrines their nuclear capability. I was uh, at the State Department when we in the Bush administration negotiated the deeply flawed nuclear arms deal with North Korea that really enshrined their program and led directly to a nuclear weapon. This seems in, in similar in so many ways. And the problem is, is we can't really time these things perfectly. If you look back at our history of predicting nuclear breakouts to that very first one, the Soviet Union, we got that wrong and, and have been really far off. So the idea that Iran could make the decision to sprint make that final sprint to a weapon, which might be a month or two, and that will detect that and be able to react militarily or otherwise, I think it's foolish. It's, it's more likely we're going to wake up one day, and uh, it's going to be too late. Chris and White, and i got to tell you, this thing has been a frustrating nail-biter. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate it.